Very good afternoon to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the Saturday Tropical Outlook. It's the 13th of July and we do have a rather quiet tropics, thankfully, to speak about uh, over the next week or so. It looks as if we're not going to see much in the way of development, but that doesn't mean we don't have plenty of things to speak about here with regards to La Nina and the overall tropics and the reasons why things have quietened down. But uh, before we continue with the video, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And also, if you don't know already, it is the Global Weather and Climate live stream tomorrow at 4pm. Hit that notification bell and you will not forget to tune in at 4 o'clock tomorrow. We're going to be looking at the uh, barrel, some of the stats with regards to barrel, the impact it had uh, further north up in New England as well. Las Vegas obviously blew away its record uh, set back last Sunday and we will have plenty more to speak about as well. So I hope you can join me and obviously if you haven't already done so and you're a lover of all things weather, hit that subscribe button. It is always greatly appreciated. So obviously, like I say, there is not an awful lot to speak about with regards to current uh, tropical situation. Um, things have quietened down quite a bit. And there is two main reasons for that shutdown within the Atlantic Basin. One of those is the fact that we've got a lot of Saharan dust. And you can see here this graphic from uh, the University out of uh, Wisconsin showing large concentrations of Saharan dust sweeping off Africa and uh, making its way across towards uh, Central America and North America. Uh, that is one of the reasons. Another one uh, significant factor is the MJO is not in a favourable phase. We've got a large area of sinking over the Atlantic Basin at the moment. You can see here the oranges represent sinking area and the greens represent rising area. And it's over the Central and Western Pacific into the maritime continent. And uh, that is fueling uh, the greatest convection within the tropical planet at the moment. Uh, so the Saharan dust is one aspect. Uh, the sinking is another aspect. And uh, this was very much forecasted uh, way back in the middle part of June. We uh, here on the channel have seen the fact that the MGO was in a favorable phase. We've seen uh, the development of three systems in that uh, active period within the tropical Atlantic and now we've seen the shutdown as expected and it looks as if that is going to maintain itself probably through the majority of the rest of July then as we move into the month of uh, August I suspect that the MGO will move we'll see less in the, the way of Saharan dust and we should start to see activity ramping up once again so some interesting uh, uh, information coming out of, of Twittersphere at the moment here. This is an interesting tweet by uh, Michael Lowry based in, in the United States saying that the current outbreak of Saharan dust across the tropical Atlantic is the highest since at least early June 2022. So it's two years ago, the last time we've seen a, a, a significant outbreak of Saharan dust. And quite often during the early part of the year, so June and July, is quite often the dustiest months within the tropical Atlantic. Um, so that's got a lot to do with the strength of the trade winds, etc. The movement of the uh, the northward shift of both the subtropical high and the intertropical convergence zone as well. But he says that the dust uh, cover over the Atlantic in 2023, so last year, was the lowest since sat satellite records began in 2002. High dust can stifle hurricane formation and help cool down Atlantic waters as well. So it does two things. It shuts down the Atlantic with regards to tropical activity, but also can cool Atlantic waters. This is an interesting uh, graphic here, or satellite image, should I say, um, of the large concentrations of Saharan, Saharan dust present over the Canary Islands. This was by London and Southeast Weather a few days ago. Uh, this was back, in fact, yesterday, the 12th of July. So very significant amounts of dust seen on satellite imagery uh, over the Canaries and over the west coast of Africa at this moment in time. This is an interesting one here by Go16. This is the water vapor imagery here showing uh, not just the, you know, the convection versus the, the dryer. The, the dryer is obviously the darkest colors 
the lightest colors it represents more in the way of moisture but also it, it shows quite nicely circulations troughs ridges and we've got quite a strong Bermuda high at the moment that is cycling uh, moisture into the the southeastern half of the United States you can see that here stretching from southeast Texas across to Florida and up the east coast we had a frontal system with an area of low pressure just off the southeast coast of the United States that's been triggering a lot of showers thunderstorms heavy rainfall and also uh, some localized severe weather as well so up the eastern seaboard we've had some very active weather in the last couple of days thanks to a feature just off the uh, coast of jacksonville florida in recent times there was a small chance of some development with that but that has not materialized you can see here african waves not really doing much they're getting choked by that dryer to the north here and generally speaking we have a lid on the atmosphere at this moment in time anyway in terms of shear not a great deal to speak about here this is a off the gfs model showing that we don't have a particularly sheared environment uh, within the uh, the itcz at the moment here but notice here that right across the atlantic basin we've only got one little feature here sitting on the north coast of a uh, of south america to speak about we've got no other area of definitive low pressure at the moment here and you can see the westlies here quite strong jet stream uh, well to the north here we've got some strong easterly winds here coming off the uh, the african coast we've actually cooled the waters here uh, in the last several weeks thanks to strong easterly trade winds but anyway let's crack on and show you another couple of interesting factors to speak about in terms of moisture this is the relative humidity between 700 and 300 HPA. You can see there's the strong Bermuda high. There isn't really much of an Azores high pressure at the moment. It's actually been kind of split apart. One piece going to the north of the UK. But generally speaking, uh, the, the main dominant uh, high pressure cell over the mid-Atlantic at the moment is over the western basin and over the Bermuda region here. There's that moisture up the east coast of the United States at the moment there's that area of low pressure we've got some moisture to speak about but it's in a sea of dry air at the moment and uh, that is quite a notable factor another little interesting couple of tweets here this is by Noah uh, Bergeron and you can see here that uh, tons of Saharan dust over Florida right now this is going back to the 10th of July and there was some very notable concentrations of Saharan dust over Florida not overly unusual June, July, this is quite often uh, an occurrence here, but uh, he says here, helping suppress thunderstorm development, grey and gloomy sky is very evident across the live cameras. So this is out of Florida, and uh, you can see the, the milky colours there representing the dusty air. You would actually think it was wildfire smoke, but it's it's actually concentration of, of Saharan dust. And obviously, as Michael Lowry said, it's the highest concentrations, the biggest uh, purse of Saharan dust. Uh, in a couple of years another quite interesting graphic here uh, showing the saharan dust getting driven swept across the atlantic and into the southeastern united states in recent times so la nina uh, we don't have uh, a great deal in terms of the strength of the enzo region at the moment here you can see here if we look at the the current uh, CDAS uh, Nino region 3.4 you can actually see where it's we're sitting in a la nada at the moment here so we're in a neutral enzo state at the moment you can see here that it, we did drop off a bit of a cliff here from 0 0.8 above average to average even below average in the space of the period between the end of april and the end of may but it's kind of stalled if you notice here in recent times and uh, what is likely to happen is that we do have a lot of cold waters this is a graphic here from the end of june by noah showing that the, this is basically the surface and this is subsurface water temperatures you notice here that we've got a blob a lot of cold water deep below the surface and it's, it is rising to the surface now what is going to allow this cold water to then get pushed up to the surface and for the la nina to start kicking in because we have seen a struggle in recent weeks with regards to La Nina. Certainly based on the uh, CFSV2, you can see here that it's kind of stalled, it's flatlined.
But notice that the model is indicating quite a sharp drop from about what just over just over the zero line right the way down to about a degree below average during the second half of July. So over the next two weeks, the model is seeing this one degree Celsius drop in sea surface temperatures in Nino region 3.4. Why would that be the case? Well, if you look at this of molar chart here, this is representative of 850 millibar winds over the tropical Pacific Ocean. And you notice here that we've had this kind of uh, wishy-washy, easterly trade wind, not particularly strong. But you notice here from about the 12th of July, which was yesterday, right the way through till the 27th of July here. If you look at the, the, the region between 180 degrees west, which is actually along the, uh, the, the international date line over the Western Pacific, right the way across the 120 west, which is actually closer to uh, the Nino region 3.4 and the South American coast. You can see here these purples showing up, which shows stronger easterly winds. And when you've got these stronger easterly winds, that cold subsurface water should start to come to the surface here. Because these are the current sea surface temperatures over the eastern Pacific. And again, you can see here, La Nina isn't really kicking in. But it is likely, given this Hovmuller chart, given the stronger winds out of the, out of the east at 850 millibars, right the way down to the surface, we should start to see the response within the, the, the surface waters over the eastern Pacific here. And, and the CFSV2 is sure, certainly bullish on that. It looks as if it's more likely to kick in, I think, later in the summer season. But we'll watch this space going forward here. So, uh, yeah, so there, there certainly is uh, things to look at. There's things to, to pay attention to, even despite the fact that we don't actually have anything going on within the tropics at the moment. So La Nina looks as if it is going to start to get a little bit of a kick over the next several weeks here, into the month of August here. What response that has uh, well, we've got very warm waters over the North Atlantic. We will see a reduction in the wind shear due to that developing La Nina. We will start to see the Saharan dust uh, drop in terms of concentration levels as we go into the month of August, very likely. And also, we are going to probably see the uh, MJO become more favourable as we move into the month of August as well. But I think over the next couple of weeks, we are going to see somewhat of a downturn in terms of tropical activity. Now, certainly based on the CFSV2, uh, rising error versus sinking error, it looks as if we have got less in the way of sinking into the month of August, according to the model. Notice here that we still have this MJO active phase over the Indian Ocean, over the maritime continent, and into the western portion of the Pacific Basin. Really, what you would be concerned about would be having these greens over the western Atlantic through the month of August, and that is not necessarily showing up even in the month of September. It doesn't look as if it's massively favorable in terms of rising versus sinking over the Atlantic into the August through uh, the August through September period, but we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Certainly, I wouldn't necessarily buy into that too much. In terms of precipitation, based on the uh, inactive phase of the MJO. We've got less in the way of convection here. Notice it's very, very far to the south here over the Atlantic Basin. Let's actually look at a, a little bit closer here and see what it's showing. So this is obviously week one of the CFSV2 weeklies. You can see here that the convection is fairly minuscule at the moment here and very far to the south. Got a little bit of convection over the eastern islands of the Caribbean, less in the way of moisture over the Gulf of Mexico. So this is representative of dry, dusty, sinking air over the basin here. So I don't necessarily expect anything development-wise over the next uh, week or so here. In the week two, you can see here that we do have some of that convection and above-average precipitation moving into the western portion of the tropical Atlantic here. Still moisture in the eastern islands here. A little bit uh, closer to South America, but notice here that the browns representing below-average rainfall and then across the south of the United States, we've got some above average precipitation to speak about. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Remember to uh, 
uh, hit that notification bell and there is this is the link here that is in the description of today's video for tomorrow's live stream so i hope you can join me for that like share and subscribe and i'll see you uh, tomorrow with the live bye for now